Hello and good morning. It's uh, November the 6th, 2023. Uh, this is Pastor Tom Mullins. I am the pastor at Lexa and Marvel United Methodist Churches here in Phillips County, Arkansas. We're just west of the of the uh, Mississippi River here in the in the Arkansas Delta. And uh, I'm just glad to be with you today. I'm so grateful for you as you continue to be with us as we do this chapter a day. Last week was a crazy week of excitement. We uh, have a new granddaughter. Her name is Isabella Lynn Mullins. She is uh, uh, doing very well uh, for four days old. Uh, but uh, as I say, those kids of ours, they've been uh, contacting us, it seems like, every couple hours just to kind of, just the excitement of having a new baby and everything. And uh, we are excited as well. It's one of those things that looking forward to them visiting with us. They uh, went to church yesterday there in Leslie. And uh, she was... Uh, welcomed and, and all of that type of thing uh, we're looking forward to here in the near future we'll be having uh, her baptism and uh, that's just a pretty much an exciting and wonderful part of being a, a minister is to be able to not only for your family but also uh, for the extended family as well uh, to be able to be a part of that so uh, today's reading is comes from uh, our scripture will be from Samuel and that'll be uh, from the second chapter there. And then Psalm 24, which is a King James, is from the King James Version, which is the 19th century version of that. We, If you go back to the 15th century, uh, as far as 1611 and, and that era, you will, uh, uh, the Old English is, is somewhat difficult to read. Spellings are different, punctuation is different, and some different things like that. So that's been kind of cleaned up over the years. Uh, to make it uh, legible to us in, uh, in the 20th and the 21st century, for that matter, 19th, 20th, and 21st, uh, as it's a continuing word of God in the English language, and uh, we're so grateful to God for that interpretation, which has that language that is so familiar to so many of us and everything. Um, anyway, I was going to say, uh, kind of got sidetracked, or not sidetracked, but just talking there before, uh, mentioning... Uh, the new uh, Isabella Lynn's birth and all of those types of things. And I want to thank the folks here also at uh, Marvel uh, United Methodist Church for the rose, uh, the single rose. And then also yesterday was uh, All Saints Day. So thinking of the, you know, having uh, this week been as about new birth and new life. And then <coughs> to remember those who have gone on before us and the ancestors of the church in our community, in our families, and to be able to honor them yesterday was a, it was a great honor for me to do so and to remember our veterans. <coughs> I'm so sorry. <coughs> but um, anyway, uh, lots going on, you know, from life to death to eternal life uh, is, is a process of, of the Christian faith that I'm so grateful to be a part of and to be with you for and to do those things as well. Um, I uh, want to go ahead and pray, and then we will do Psalm 24, KJV, King James Version, and then we will do uh, the second chapter of Samuel and read that and share that with you as well. Dear Holy God, we thank you for all that you do for us, your many gifts and blessings. As we come to you today, help us to discern your word, to be able to hear the words of our hymnal, and to know that we are worshiping you 24-7 that we are always aware of your presence with us, and we thank you for that. We know there are times when it seems to be a distance or there seems to be something that's quieted by the fact that we just don't hear or see the things that are to come. But we know that you are, are a special God and that you are the only God. And we know that we are, are just you know, blessed to know you as our Savior. We ask for your blessing upon the reading of this word, and we thank you for the fact that you are present with us as we go through this journey, this journey from, from Genesis to the book of Revelation, knowing that you are there to open our hearts and our minds, that we might be able to see what it is that you have for us and have planned for us. We thank you for being our God and the blessings that you bestow upon us. We ask and do all of these things in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. 
Who shall stand in God's holy place? Those with clean hands and with pure hearts. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. For he hath founded it upon the seas and established it upon the floods. Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Or who shall stand in his holy place? He that hath clean hands and a pure heart, who hath not lifted up his soul into vanity, nor sworn deceitfully, he shall receive the blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is the generation of them that seek him, that seek thy face, O Jacob. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Who shall stand in God's holy place, those with clean hands and with pure hearts? Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the kingdom and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, even lift them up, ye everlasting doors and the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord of hosts, he is the King of glory. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Who shall stand in the God's holy place? Those with clean hands and with pure hearts. I've uh, served churches. <coughs> excuse me. I've served churches that have done the responses and things, and I think that that can be very beautiful uh, in worship to do, uh, to recognize and to praise God. I can't think of anything more uh, scripture worthy than to have that, where you uh, acknowledge God for the gifts and the greatness that He has and the things that He does for us. I mean, it's like there's no other way to get into that uh, spirit and to other than to be drawn into it by the by the Lord himself so uh, pretty remarkable stuff and pretty amazing that God does so much for us despite us being rebellious and doing all the things that we do this is the second chapter of, uh, of the book of Samuel the first book of Samuel uh, in Jewish tradition these are these two books are one book so Samuel and um, uh, Chronicles are they're they're separate, but they're the two books. The first and second Samuel is one book, and the second and uh, our first and second Chronicles is one book. So we're do, we've done Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, uh, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, and now we are in first and and first Samuel, and then second Samuel, of course, first and second Chronicles. And then Ezra, Nehemiah, and then finally Esther. And I think that will be an interesting uh, journey that we go as we continue this journey. And I thank you for being a part of it. This uh, next month, uh, this will be about our third year of doing this. And uh, I apologize that it seems sporadic at times, but I want to give my complete attention to it and to be able to do that and share with you uh, about I've had times where the computer has not been good to us, but I just want to say the iPad is extremely uh, updated, and, and, and it's nice to not have to worry about it or look around to see that uh, that we're still filming or that it's filming the right way. It doesn't lock up and stuff. So, uh, not saying that that's not going to happen, but uh, here in the, in the office, um, I also wanted to say I didn't mention it in our prayers, but. Uh, I had ablation surgery on my heart last week, two weeks ago, and then turned around and then had uh, vascular on my leg. Had that procedure done Friday, uh, so uh, go back for checkups on both of those. Uh, I seem to be healing pretty well. I uh, am pretty appreciative of, of all of the care that's been given as uh, caregivers. Uh, both at UAMS at uh, Little Rock and then also at uh, the vascular vein place at uh, West Memphis and everything. So 
Alright, um, chapter two, and um, the, the reason I brought that up was not so much that uh, kind of bragging, but I, I do want to brag on God for that, but this is Hannah's prayer that begins this chapter and uh, being uh, blessed by the gift that she was giving Samuel. So, Hannah prayed and said, My heart exalts in the Lord, my strength is exalted in my God. My mouth derides my enemies because I rejoice in my victory. There is no holy one like the Lord, no one beside you. There is no rock like our God. Talk no more so very proudly. Let not arrogance come from your mouth. For the Lord is a God of knowledge, and by him actions are weighed. The bows of the mighty are broken, but the feeble gird on but the feeble gird on strength. Those, were, those who were full have hired themselves out for bread, but those who were hungry are fat with spoil. The barren has borne seven, but she who has many children is forlorn. The Lord kills and brings to life. He brings down to Sheol and raises up. The Lord makes poor and makes rich. He brings low, he also exalts. He raises up the poor from the dust, and he lifts the needy from the ash heap to make them sit with princes and to inherit a seat of honor. For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's, and on them he has set the world. He will guard the feet of his faithful ones, but the wicked shall be cut off in darkness, for not by might does one prevail. The Lord, his adversaries, shall be shattered. The Most High will thunder in heaven. The Lord will judge the ends of the earth. He will give strength to his king and exalt the power of his anointed. Then Elkanah went home to Ramah, while the boy remained to minister to the Lord in the presence of the priest Eli. Now the sons of Eli were scoundrels. They had no regard for the Lord or the duties of the priests to the people. When anyone offered sacrifice, the priest's servants would come, while the meat was boiling, with a three-pronged fork in his hand, and he would thrust it into the pan or kettle or cauldron or pot. All that the fork brought up, the priest would take for himself. This is what he, they did at Shiloh to all the Israelites who came there. Moreover, before the fat was burned, the priest's servant would come <coughs> and say to the one who was sacrificing, Give meat for the priest to roast, for he will not accept boiled meat from you, but only raw. And if the man said to him, Let them burn the fat first, and then take whatever you wish, he would say, No, you must give it now. If not, I will take it by force. Thus the sin of the young men were, was very great in the sight of the Lord, for they treated the offerings of the Lord with contempt. Samuel was ministering before the Lord, a boy wearing a linen ephod. Epod. His mother used to make for him a little robe and take it to him each year when she went up with her husband to offer the yearly sacrifice. Then Eli would bless Elkanah and his wife and say, May the Lord repay you with children by this woman for the gift that she made to the Lord. And then they would return to their home. And the Lord took note of, of Hannah. She conceived and bore three sons and two daughters. And the boy Samuel grew up in the presence of the Lord. Now Eli was very old. He heard all that his sons were doing to all Israel, and how they lay with the women who served at the entrance of the tent of the meeting. He said to them, Why do you do such things? For I hear of your evil dealings from all these people. No, my sons, it is not a good report that I hear the people of the Lord spreading abroad. If one person sins against another, someone can intercede for the sinner with the Lord. But if someone sins against the Lord, who can make intercession? But they would not listen to the voice of their father, for it was the will of the Lord to kill them. Now the boy Samuel continued to grow both in stature and favor with the Lord and with the people. A man of God came to Eli and said to him, Thus the Lord has said, I revealed myself to the family of your ancestors in Egypt when they were slaves to the house of Pharaoh. 
I chose him out of all the tribes of Israel to be my priest, to go up to my altar to offer incense, to wear an ephod before me, and I have and I gave to the family of your ancestor all my offerings by fire from the people of Israel. Why then look with greedy eye at my sacrifices and my offerings that I commanded, and honor your sons more than me by fattening yourselves on the choicest parts of every offering of my people Israel? Therefore the Lord, the God of Israel, declares, I promise that your family and the family of your ancestors should go in and out before me forever. But now the Lord declares, Far be it from me, for those who honor me I will honor, and those who despise me shall be treated with contempt. See, a time is coming when I will cut off your strength and be in the strength of your ancestor's family, so that no one in your family will live to old age. Then in distress you will look with greedy eye on all the prosperity that shall be bestowed upon Israel, and no one in your family shall ever live to old age. The only one of you whom I shall not cut off from the altar shall be spared to weep out his eyes and grieve his heart. All the members of your household shall die by the sword. The fate of your two sons, Hophni, Hophni and Phinehas, shall be the sign to you. Both of them shall die on the same day. I will raise up for myself a faithful priest, who shall do according to what is in my heart and in my mind. I will build him a sure house, and he shall go in and out before my anointed one forever. Everyone who is left in your family shall come to implore him for a piece of silver or a loaf of bread and shall say please put me in one of the priest's palace priest's priest's palace that i may eat a morsel of bread the word of god for the people of god thanks be to god it's a little bit longer chapter we have some different things going on here and different ways of, of dealing with all of that and i I'm pretty appreciative of the fact that we um, have this time together to be able to think about those things. But I think it's one of those, uh, I love the prayers of the Bible, and especially as we did today with the Psalm 24, the songs of the Bible is what I like to call this, uh, that. I uh, uh, Cotton was a professor that I had, it was one of the first professors I had at seminary. Uh, it wasn't for a seminary class, it was actually, he was... Uh, one of, uh, I cannot think of the woman's name off the top of my hand, there was another professor uh, and everything. And the remarkable part about it was uh, Cotton was from Iowa, and he just passed away just recently, but he uh, made the comment uh, when they were doing my evaluation and stuff for the, when I was taking the first two classes, of course, the study, which is there's it's two of 20 <clears throat> that I took, and that's the reason that I chose uh, the seminary of St. Paul to go to and everything. But uh, I uh, sometimes, you know, uh, think that it, it's you know, certain people are put in, in places and things uh, within the grasp of, of our uh, being able to, uh, I don't know, the journey that we take and being able to be a better minister was the whole purpose of me taking any of the classes that I've taken. I, I know there are people that'll say, oh, you know, they, they make me want to go to, they have to go to this class and this and that, and, and I just really didn't learn anything. Or, and then all of a sudden, you think that maybe from a class or a professor who just didn't click with you, and then down the road, you may hear something. I actually did click with uh, uh, Dr. Cotton. It was like he uh, was, was a very instrumental in all that, but give me the kind of the concept of understanding. I, I knew there were two stories in Genesis about the, uh, the creation of the world. And the thing that he talked about was songs. And he talked about music being something that even if we listen out into space, I suppose, even the quiet and, and, and all that kind of thing. But if we go to a different level of that and listening, uh, we can hear the, the sound of creation as things move about in space and different things like that. So um, he talked about creation being that, it, like, like, um, being a song as opposed to being just like a poem, where he would you would say that you know, and and poems can be dramatic too. But uh, the thing is, it's like in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and 
you know, the shadow of God crossed over the waters. And, uh, but he said that God said, let there be light. It was, it wasn't like a command. It was just a, just an announcement or a narration. You know, it was like, it was one of those things. I don't know if that makes sense to you, but it's like one of those things that, and I think that sometimes, uh, even today, if we really, really listen to people when they give their testimony, when we listen to people and they're talking about God, uh, you can hear that kind of uh, relationship. And Psalms is, is definitely a, a, one of those uh, intriguing parts of that, being able to sing out and know that God is a part of that. We uh, tend to use, in worship, we tend to use music as a part of entertainment. And uh, not that that's wrong in the way that it, but it's not to entertain us, it's to praise and to worship God through, through that uh, kind of concept and that method. So uh, it is pretty remarkable how wonderful uh, God is and God does and things that God does, but then to turn around and to remember uh, that that's why we are, uh, I don't know, performing, quote unquote, and doing all of that type of uh, doing the things that God demands of us and that he wants us to be able to love and to care for one another. And a lot of times we forget to do that and we forget to be a part of um, what it is that that makes worshiping and loving God and, and knowing and having a relationship with God so important. And uh, we tend to sometimes kind of get into the humdrum or, the, or, you know, and we're not humble in the fact that we... Uh, don't recognize that God and his wonderful uh, dealings and, and worship that he has with us uh, and, and different things. And I think it's great that Hannah, she praises God and talks about God in, in ways that is uh, so uh, uplifting and welcoming and, and making it possible for, um, you know, just for the love that, uh, that she has for what God has done for her. And being that she reached out to God way before that, asking and and, and uh, but also praising Him in the same in the same tone, and not only asking for something but also praising Him first, and not like the um, we've been doing in the scriptures and, and everything that, whereas uh, prior to that it was a matter of uh, you know the Pharisees and the Sadducees and all those folks Herodians. Uh, wanting to trick Jesus into something by saying, oh, you're wonderful, you're great, and this and that. So, but this is genuine. This is a heartfelt, uh, on your knees, praying to yourself kind of thing uh, that differs from the practices of the day when uh, it was like when Hannah, they could see her mouth moving that she was praying and thinking that she was kind of crazy. Uh, but now that we've come into our age, we, we realize that you can talk to yourself and your headspace and have that conversation with God uh, that does, it's not audible, you know, and different things. But there's a blessing to that. <coughs> when we do speak it out loud, um, I think we remember and do a lot better that way. Um, just trying to think if there was, um, you know, as we go along and then, Sometimes I think hyperbole, uh, when we're writing something that's about something that happened and we know the fate and uh, there for, uh, is it Hophna and, and Phineas, uh, the sons of Eli, their thing is that they were, they doomed themselves. But then on this side of it, you're looking back, it looks like God, uh, God allowed them to do that. He allowed them to make those choices and to make the choices of being able either to serve God and do the right thing or to be manipulative and just, uh, you know, when the priests have the worst, uh, oh, I don't know, they have the bad reputation and, and not only do they have the reputation, but they have the, the means and the things that they do there in history. Judges were like that too. They had their ups and downs. Priests, uh, being a, a leader, it's, it's not being in charge, but it's about being in love with those that you're in charge of. And uh, I think that a pastor or an elder or a deacon 
or any other kind of, even a Sunday school teacher, uh, not saying that that's a lower grade or something, but uh, the, the workers in the church and stuff that may not have titles or ordination or, or whatever it might be. And that's how kind of I think a lot of the, the breaks come along. I noticed like in anthropology, uh, the, the, the common folks, they tended to, to be okay with having religious leaders and having them do the services and worship as long as things were going good, but then thing, something go bad and all of a sudden they were, they turned on them and uh, the population turned on the, on the high, higher class people. And uh, at that time and, then, and throughout history, that's been the truth. And I think that a lot of times uh, in our churches today, we kind of go through that same route. We try to, as long as things are going good and there's lots of people coming to church and there's lots of money flowing and there's lots of things going on, uh, people are kind of happy with that. But then we hit that valley and then it's kind of, we go stagnant. You know, uh, churches go through cycles. You figure if a church has been around for a hundred years, it started, it took off like a rocket, more than likely. And it was like there were, you know, classes were full, people were there. I remember that when I was a kid. We got on the bus, you know, 50, 60 kids on each bus coming in for Sunday school and they had at least a dozen buses and it was like one of those things to have all those kids from the neighborhood, all of them coming together to worship and to understand and to learn about God. Uh, and then I, I kind of see the results of all of that. Now, uh, what used to be a church that had between two and 500 people on a Sunday morning, depending on the, on the year, uh, on the calendar and stuff, uh, things that were going on, but then turn around and now to look in there and see the same church with only 25, 35, 45 people uh, is pretty daunting in the fact that it seems like, it's like, well, what happened? Because I love church. I love going to high school. I love doing those things. And uh, I don't know, it's just, it's a different world. It's a different place. Our technology, even this time of devotion and prayer is one of those things that uh, this would have never happened uh, 25 50 years ago I mean it's like it just it just the technology wasn't there in the way to reach out and to speak to people sometimes I feel like I'm just talking to the air talking to basically to myself <laughs> and all of that kind of thing as we're on here but I'm so grateful because there are so many folks that'll say well you're devotional your time with us and the time that I learned this and I knew that I didn't know that or and I, and I think it's funny things because it's like I'm the same way I'll read something and I'm like wow that's just a little bit that's a horrible story. That's a, you know, but it has a point. There's a point to either everything that's in the Bible. Not everything is relevant to the right now and right here at this moment in your life. But the fact is, if you will continue your journey in the Bible, if you are reading it all the time, if you are looking at it, but if you look at it hot as a, I don't know, the, as you, if you look at it in pieces and parts and, and sound bites and all that kind of stuff, you lose a lot. Uh, it's kind of like the difference between reading the book and watching the movie. The book is the one that has all the intimate details and different things. Uh, La Miserale is, is an example of that. I've seen three different movies made from that book, and it's, I swear to you that there is no... Uh, it just it does not compare. I read the whole series, uh, had read it on... I had one of those little iPads, not an iPad, but I had a... I can't think what my first one was called. I still have it. I still have the, um, and it, I can, you know, watch movies or read books and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and I also have a, um, what is the one called? The Nook, I think. I ended up getting that from somebody else. That's second hand. I got that. But the, the Cruise tablet is what my first one is. It's an Android tablet. Uh, and didn't have a whole lot of space and time. Uh, now things are a little different. I don't know that I might have to kick that out of the box one of these days and, and see how it does and what it does for us and stuff. But anyway, kind of went down a rabbit hole. Sorry about that. Um, I'm just glad that we're here to be able to do that. But to know that um, when it, you know, in the scriptures that on Second Samuel today, when it says that the Lord had to set it up that He was going to kill them, uh, they are the ones who made that choice. You figure the author. Is writing down because he's looking at the he's looking at it as history. They were looking at it as the here and now, 
and saying, you know, live, die, you know, live and be merry and happy and uh, wine, women in song and move forward and do what we want to do because nobody's, you know, we're in charge, we're the bosses and, uh, you know, we'll do what we want to do. And uh, they knew better. You know, it wasn't like they had no access to, to scripture or to the teachings or anything, but they didn't seek that out. Where it seems like Samuel, at least from what I know, have read in the past and stuff, is like Samuel did that. He sought out God's, he sought out what God wanted him to do and he, he moved forward with that. And he's the beginning of something different, something, a different type of leader in that for all of these generations and judges who kind of popped up and popped and popped out of the, popped into the scenery and then popped away off into something else. Uh, you know, I, I don't know that, like, I love the stories of Samson and Delilah and, and you know, and, and all the different ones that are biblical texts. But the thing that I find out, mostly before Samuel, at least this is my opinion, uh, we can talk about it or whatever you want to say, but before Samuel, uh, it was kind of a hit and miss since Moses. Moses, now Moses, and that's, that's a different story, but, but as far as like, but this is a recapturing and we're starting to develop into something different. As we were moving, we have Moses who was a leader who brought them out of Egypt, who, who did all the things, made all the judgments and uh, was sought out God and uh, that's that's the big thing. He sought out God for confirmation of what he was, choices he was making and different things. Not saying he was perfect, and and but he was pretty much as close as you can get in human form. And then as we move forward, and then it kind of goes into chaos. A lot of different leaders, a lot of different ones that were uh, just kind of, you know, mediocre at best. And some of them were God awful. And then, you know, and so as we move forward, now we're coming back into a new age, <clears throat> and we're looking at Samuel. And, and the, uh, um, if they had listened to Samuel, and if they had, you know, had chose that path, it would have been God's path that they would have been. It would have been. I don't think the struggle would have been the same. Uh, not that they're saying that they would not have struggled, but it was like the struggle would have been more. Uh, with God's help and all of those types of things where it's like God was willing to help, but they weren't willing to choose God and to choose God's advice. So that's kind of where we're at in that story and that part of that. So I uh, have a uh, service coming up. The seminary is having their chapel service at 11 o'clock. So we're getting kind of close to that. I uh, messed around in the yard today and got some of the stuff uh, put up for Thanksgiving. Uh, looking forward to my granddaughter coming down to visit me uh, uh, soon and maybe maybe soon and then also uh, for Thanksgiving, uh, just to be with her first Thanksgiving, which I think is funny because how like life rotates and different things. Um, Kim and I were married November the 4th, so uh, the, uh, I'm trying to think what, to, today is the, Today's the sixth, right? So <laughs> that's sad. But we spent convalescing on Saturday. Uh, but when we came back Friday, we stopped. I think it's Roadside Barbecue. It's right off of. Uh, it's on seventy, right off of uh, I forty there uh, in West Memphis. And uh, my goodness, uh, I would like to give a recommendation to them that they are a wonderful uh, meal. Uh, we had ribs, uh, coleslaw, and uh, ba baked beans, of course, and um, just it was it was really good. So we kind of celebrated that way uh, with that. And uh, but 36 years and uh, everything. So it's been uh, a heck of a journey. This last year has been things, and, uh, and I just want to acknowledge her. Uh, I have a partner in life who I couldn't ask for anything better. And uh, I know that she might get a little bit bigger head on that, but it's like one of those things that I do appreciate her. And I may not say it enough, and it's one of those things, but I, uh, 36 years of, of a relationship, and, and she still puts up with me. So I'm so grateful for that. I'm grateful for the new baby. 
uh, just grateful to God for all that he does for us. We are in a time of harvest, and uh, that's coming to an end uh, this year. And uh, it's just amazing that, uh, you know, it's a new appointment. Been here less than six months, and um, uh, I'm just so grateful to all of you here in Marvel and, and Alexa as well for your encouragement, for your prayers and thoughts. And uh, I hope that in the new year, and to pray for this, is that uh, we will see some changes and some things that, um, that uh, you know, will reflect on, on our faith and our, our journey in Christ, that we would be able to lift that up. Uh, you know, I know that not every decision or everything that we make is, uh, you know, the SPRC, uh, all the different committees that we have for the church, uh, all of a sudden, not only here locally, but also the ones that are the cabinet, the, the district superintendents and the assistants, uh, the executive assistants that they have uh, that are over the district and, and uh, do those, uh, does a lot to do the paperwork. 19th at 1.30 will be our charge conference for Lexa and Marvel. It'll be here at Marvel at 1.30 uh, after your worship service. And uh, we are welcoming Edna. Edna Morgan, our district superintendent, will be here uh, to do that. Uh, we're getting away from the online and doing the in-person meetings and different stuff. But uh, as of the second, we had all of our paperwork in and, and all of those kind of things. So I think that that's all going well. Looking forward to meeting with the SPRC uh, here in the next week or two uh, to get that paperwork done, consultations and recommendations and stuff. Uh, I'm looking forward to maybe a few more years uh, here in, in Phillips County, maybe even all the way to retirement. And they, they want to leave me here. I am very fine with that. I, I am blessed with a, a, a wonderful parsonage and, a, and blessed with a wonderful congregations. Uh, I really uh, didn't know or don't know. I've been up and down the Delta, but it's like I haven't been uh, established in there and stuff. But, uh, we are, we are loving it here, and we are so proud to be and honored to be a part of uh, Marvel Elaine Schools and the Marvel Academy, and to be able to support them with our prayers and thoughts, and uh, as well as the local other areas, Barton, and uh, I'm not real geographically inclined as, as of yet, but I'm working on that. I uh, want to ask for prayers for uh, school. Uh, almost finished with this semester. And to complete this class, and then we'll begin back in January for another class, and then hopefully uh, the fall of 2024, uh, be back on track. We'll have 14 more hours or 14 more credits uh, until the practice thesis. We're working on that to get that established and to get that done. I, uh, it's kind of different from being learning stuff to being able to the stuff that you learn to be able to share it with someone else. So. Uh, hopefully that's something that's not only true of, of seminary and this doctorate program, but also true of uh, the ministry of uh, Phillips County as well. All right. Um, I think that's about all I had. Let me go ahead and go to prayer. And uh, I will see you tomorrow, Lord willing. Uh, we'll be here to do the uh, uh, newsletters and get those out to you all and things that are going on in the weeks ahead. Uh, just... Keep us in your thoughts and prayers and know that we are praying for you for all the things that are going on with you in your life as well. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this word, this word of God that we have, con that we have been able to share today that we can uh, use in our life. We hope that uh, it is beneficial to those who are listening, those who are on Facebook Live, but also that might read it at a different time. Asynchronous is, is the way that uh, that is uh, described. But we know that we are all in this together. We are about being God's church. We thank you for all that you do as we look up to you and are thankful to you for the blessings that you bestow upon us. We ask for your blessing upon those who are injured or ill, whether it be emotional, physical, or spiritual need that they have, that you, being the creator and the great physician, would be able to help them in their time of need. Bless this, this time together as we go through the book of Samuel that we would be able to lift up its meaning to us so that we might be able to share that with others. Thank you for all that you do, your many gifts and blessings, and all of this we ask in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.
the Spirit. Amen. Well, have a great Monday and a good start to a great week. And uh, we will talk to you soon. God bless.